in this lesson we are going to talk about power functions and power functions are functions of the form where you have f of x equals a times x to some power n and do note that a cannot be equal to zero nor can n be equal to zero so there's your restrictions for this power function now you do have a power function can be a monomial function and so notice with your constant that would be your f of x equals c and that's going to be just some constant value that you have here your linear would be f of x equals x and again that was just a nice straight line there quadratic that again that was a parent function we have f of x equals x squared and again that's going to be where you have your parabola your next one you have your cubic function and that's going to be f of x equals x cubed and that's going to be something like this and all of these values you should be familiar with from your parent functions. Now your quintic and quartic, that's going to mimic your um, quadratic and your cubic. Quintic would be talking about if f of x was equal to x to the fourth power. And what's going to happen is it's going to mimic your quadratic, except for it's going to lay on the x-axis just a tad bit longer than your x squared would. And then your quintic is going to look cubic. You're going to have f of x equals x to the fifth. And again, very similar to the cubic. However, it's going to lay on that x-axis a little bit longer before it um, moves on. Okay, so looking at the exponents, if we have an even power, then that function would be symmetric with the y-axis. And then if you are odd power, you are symmetric with the origin. All right, and now we have a good review of in behavior. And so it's given us some characteristics here. Notice that if we have an even power and positive coefficients, then as x tends toward positive infinity, our function value is tending toward positive infinity as well. As x tends toward negative infinity, then f of x is tending toward positive infinity. So your function is moving upward. Over on the next example, notice this has been flipped over. But you're still going to talk about as x approaches positive infinity, so as x is approaching positive infinity, f of x is approaching negative infinity. On the other side, x approaches negative infinity, so you're moving this direction, and as your function is now moving toward negative infinity on this side. Okay, with your odd powers, and positive coefficient as x is tending to the right or x is approaching positive infinity notice that f of x is also approaching positive infinity as x approaches negative infinity so as we're moving this direction notice that f of x is approaching negative infinity and finally, on the other side, we have x is approaching positive infinity, f of x is approaching negative infinity, and that's because we have that negative coefficient. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching positive infinity. Okay, so when we're doing a sketch of 3x to the sixth, it will mimic x squared. We know this is going to flatten out here on the x-axis. We will be passing through 0, 0. Now, um, for those of us that want another point or two to help us with this, 
do keep in mind um, this even power, you are symmetrical with the y-axis. So here we can go ahead and say symmetry is with the y-axis, and we can put that to use for us. If I let x be 1, so if I let x be 1, that's going to be 3 times 1 to the 6th, which is going to be 3. So I know I have the point over 1, up 1, 2, 3. And since we are symmetric about the y-axis, then I know the distance from here to here is the same from here to here. So I have that other point there. And that's for um, those of us that are still wanting to make sure we have a couple of points there to help guide us. So that should help. Now let's go ahead and connect these. Again, spending a little bit longer on the x-axis. And there's your sketch. Now your domain, it's all real numbers. Your range is going to be from 0 to infinity. Your x-intercept is at 0, 0, just like your y. Your increasing interval is going to be from 0 to infinity. Decreasing is from negative infinity to zero, and we don't have any discontinuities. And the end behavior, x is approaching infinity, so f of x is also approaching infinity. And then as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is also approaching positive infinity. Okay, our next function is odd. So we do know that will mimic our cubic function. And it also helps us to see that our symmetry is about the origin. I also see where we're going to have our point zero, zero. And again, for us that need to have a couple extra points, we just want to make sure we're getting it right. Then let's choose a positive one to substitute in. And we're going to have negative 2 times 1 to the 5th, which is negative 2. So that ordered pair is 1, negative 2. So I'm going to go over 1, down 2. Now, if this is symmetric about the origin, that means I should also have a point that's like this in the second quadrant. Well, if the point was in the second quadrant, keep in mind you need a negative x and a positive y. Mm. So that means I'm going to have a negative 1 and a positive 2. All right, and there's our points. We know this should look cubic. It's going to stay on the x longer than the cubic. And so when we draw this out, we are going to come down through here, stay on the x-axis, and then go on down. All right, now let's talk about our domain and our range. Those are both going to be all real numbers. Our x and y intercept, we're both at 0, 0. This one would not be increasing. Remember, you need to read that from left to right. Decreasing, we are decreasing for all real numbers. We've already seen that we're symmetric about the origin. And discontinuities, we have none. And our end behavior, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is approaching positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is also approaching negative infinity. Okay, for our next problem, again, notice that we are even. And so, automatically, I know I'm symmetric about the y-axis. I'm also at 0, 0. Now, do keep in mind that if we're symmetric about the y-axis, then we are mirror images on each side. And let's choose f at 2. And we could choose 1, but most people don't want to graph a half. So, if we choose 2, then we're going to have negative 1 half times 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 4th is 16, so that's going to give us negative 8. So I'm going to go over 2 and down 8. Now, since this is symmetric about the y-axis, then I know automatically that at negative 2, I'm also at negative 8. So 
Now we're going to sketch this and do keep in mind we are flattening out at the origin and then going back down. And hopefully we've done a better job than what I just did there. All right, your domain, again, all real numbers. However, your range, that's going to be from negative infinity up to zero included. Your x and y intercepts, we're still at zero, zero. Increasing interval is going to be from negative infinity up to zero. Decreasing from zero to infinity. Your discontinuities would be none. And then your end behaviors, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching negative infinity. The next type of function that we'll look, look at will be our negative exponents, and those turn into our reciprocal functions. So, x to the negative 1 is going to change into 1 over x, and again, this is called our reciprocal function. And do you know, with the reciprocal function, you do have discontinuities there at zero. So it would be a good idea to draw in that asymptote here. And keep in mind that asymptote is at x equals zero. And we also have this horizontal asymptote. Now that's not necessarily a discontinuity, that is just your horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. The first thing we can do with this problem would be to rewrite it so that we have this in the proper text would be 4 over x squared. Now, something for us to keep in mind, this would also be, since that's an even exponent, this is going to be symmetric with the y-axis. And that's going to be useful for us because we could plot some points if you wanted to. Um, this is going to mimic the reciprocal function, but it is changed slightly. If we wanted to do um, some points, let's say we want to plug in 1. So f at 1 would be 4. So I'm going to go over 1, up 4. And then that would also imply, since we are symmetric about the y-axis, we have that point over there. Now we can also plug in 2, and that's going to give me 4 over 4, which is 1. So I know I can go over 2 and up 1, and so I can go back 2 and up 1. And we could continue that on through if we wanted to. Um, let's just do one more, just for grins. Uh, Let's do not a three, maybe four. Let's find f at four. So f at four is going to be one fourth. So all the way out here at four, we're up just a little bit. And so the same thing would be if we went back four, we're up just a bit. And so we're seeing what's going to happen here. This is going to run parallel to the x and y axis. It's not going to cross it though, just like the reciprocal function doesn't. Oh dear, that side got a little wobbly. Let's go this other direction. All right. So now let's answer some questions. Our domain, well, the domain looks like we're gonna have all real numbers but x can't be zero. The range is gonna be everything above the x-axis, so that's going to be from zero not included all the way to infinity. We don't have any x-intercepts or y. Increasing interval would be from negative infinity up to zero. Decreasing would be from zero to infinity. And our discontinuities at would be an infinite, and that infinite is at x equals zero. 
and our end behavior. And this is going to change a little bit. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x is now approaching 0. It's approaching that x-axis. And then in the other direction, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching 0 on that side too. Okay, with number 2, we do have that negative exponent again. So in rewriting it, this is going to be negative 1 over x to the fifth. Notice that is an odd exponent, so we are symmetrical to the origin. And we can pick some points and plug in. Um, we can pick x to be 1. So if we plug in 1, f at 1, then we're going to get negative 1. So I'm going to go over 1 and down 1. And now keep in mind that is the ordered pair 1, negative 1. And in the second quadrant, we have a negative x and a positive y. So that means I need a negative 1 and then a positive 1. So we're seeing that um, we have really our reciprocal function and it has been um, flipped over the axis here. So we can go ahead and connect these. And we've got those good anchoring points there. And we can talk about now our domain and range and characteristics. The domain, all real numbers, x can't be zero. The range, well, it looks like the same thing, all real numbers, but y can't be zero. The x-intercept and y-intercept would be none. Your interval, intervals of increasing, that's going to be from negative infinity to zero. And then on the other side of zero, we continue to increase. So we're going to say from zero to infinity. Decreasing would be none. We already know we're symmetric to the origin. We have a discontinuity. We have an infinite at x equals zero. And our end behavior as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is approaching zero. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is still approaching zero in that direction as well. Okay, for our next problem, very similar. Um, we are going to look right here at this power. So if we were to rewrite this, this is really 3 over 2x cubed. And again, what we need to focus on is the fact that we have x cubed. And that being odd, you are symmetric about the origin. Also notice that we didn't flip this any which way, so it, that's okay. Um, we can plug in some values here if you want to. If we plug in a 1, f at 1 is 3 halves, which is 1 and a half. That's not too bad to graph. We also know we're at 0, 0. Nope, can't be at 0, 0. We have our asymptote there. So let's see. We're going to go over 1 and then up a half. And keep in mind, this is symmetric about the origin, so I can go back and down a half. All right, and so let me get rid of that dot there. You, we don't want that on there. And so based on our reciprocal function, this is um, about as much as we need to sketch this. We are running parallel to those axes. So here's our graph and our domain. Again, all real numbers except x can't be 0. Our range is going to be all real numbers except y can't be 0. x-intercept is none. y-intercept is none. Increasing, well, we're not increasing anywhere. Decreasing, you can say all real numbers except 0, or you can say negative infinity up to 0, and then 0 to infinity. Discontinuities, we have an infinite at x equals 0. And your end behavior, 
as x tends toward infinity, f of x tends toward zero. As x tends toward negative infinity, f of x tends toward zero still. Okay, our next problem, we have negative four. And so if we rewrite this, we're going to have negative two over x to the fourth. Again, that is even, so we are symmetric about the y-axis, which makes this a lot easier to graph. Now, keep in mind that if we start plugging in some points here to kind of find out where we're headed with this, um, f at one, if we substitute in a one, that's gonna give us negative two. So I'm gonna go over one and down two and since we're symmetric about the y-axis, that means I can go back one and down two. And we can plug in another point if we need to. We could plug in two or three, but again, this is gonna mimic that reciprocal function and we see that we are symmetric about the y-axis. We also see that we have been flipped over. So, really we have just about all the information we would need in order to get a good sketch of this. Okay, and so now let's talk about the characteristics again. The domain for this one, again, all real numbers, except for x can't be zero. The same for range, this time though, we're gonna be looking at everything below the x-axis. So that's gonna be from negative infinity up to zero, not included. We don't have any x and y intercepts. Increasing interval is from zero to infinity. Decreasing negative infinity to zero. We already see that we are about symmetric about the y-axis. At x equals zero, we have an infinite discontinuity. And our end behavior, again, notice we are going to have as x approaches infinity, f of x is approaching zero. And as x is approaching negative infinity, f of x is still approaching zero. Okay, and for our last example of our notes, Again, hopefully we can look at this and tell this has been flipped over, even exponent here. So really we're symmetric about the y-axis. And this is gonna look very similar to the last one we did. We can plot those exact points if you need to. But again, we're symmetric about the y-axis and we have been flipped over so we're gonna end up with something like this. And again, our domain, you're gonna have all real numbers except for zero. Your range is gonna be from negative infinity up to zero. You're not gonna have any X or Y intercepts, and you're not going to have, let's see, increasing interval. You would be increasing on the other side of zero. So we're gonna say from zero to infinity, negative infinity to zero, you're decreasing. Discontinuity, you have infinite. At x equals zero, and your end behavior, very similar to the last. As x approaches infinity, f of x is approaching zero. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching zero again.